Now for the main event here at the call on this Thursday. The heavyweight bout in the blue corner. The man with the suave dapper looks from Shore and Partners. Philip the Bull Pepe. And in the red corner, the smiling assassin from Deep Data Analytics, Nathan the Bear Somersandaran. You two, keep it clean, keep it competitive, keep it concise, but give us good direction. We're going to give it back to you as shareholders. I think that makes sense, and I think it's a buy. Um, right. So coal companies are doing very well at the moment. Uh, the Met coal price was 50 bucks US a tonne a few years ago. About 350 a tonne today, having come off 450 yeah. tonne highs, double on PCP. This, their, um, New Hope made about a billion dollars in free cash flow last year. In, in different times, they would, would invest that in new mines and trying mm. to expand coal production. You can't do that at the moment. No. It's politically incorrect. So what are they doing? They're giving it back to shareholders. So that's 20% of its market cap in free cash flow uh, that they paid a special divvy uh, with the full year. And they're doing a share buyback. Uh, I think they said in the release they think it's cheap. But with all this cash, rather than sitting there earning zero or yeah. next to zero, they can't reinvest it. Give it back to shareholders. Yeah. If you've got franking credits, pay the special dividend. If you don't, do a share. And the other back. thing they could do is, oh, let's diversify out of coal. Well, that's that's, that's fraught with danger, isn't it? Investors <laughs> can do that better than they can. So yeah. look, it makes absolute sense. Uh, why I think it's a buy. A, as Nathan said, the share the buyback will support the um, the share price. They're probably going to have another strong year next year. Um, mm. If if coal prices stay anywhere near where they are, even if they come off a bit, there's still several hundred millions of dollars in free cash flow. You might get another one next year or another special divvy. So right. it's uh, it's stronger for longer, I think. Okay, so uh, you don't reckon we've missed the boat on this? Uh, no. For investors to get in with new money? No, no. Okay, no. all right, buy on you, hope. All right, let's get into the stocks that you want us to take a look at. And uh, first up today, Sam wants a view. Uh, Philip on Premier Investments, uh, Solomon Lou's Retail Empire. Um, any parent or grandparent knows you get fleeced at Smiggle. Well, they own Smiggle. By owning these shares, you can at least get your own back. Peter Alexander, a whole bunch of different famous retail brands. Uh, their investment side, they own uh, stake in Breville and, of course, a long-term investor in Maya. Yeah. Uh, look, I think it's a buy. Uh, very high quality retailer. Everyone's waiting for the consumer to fall over, for retail sales to fall. It hasn't happened. Um, no. re- the print a couple of days ago showed that clothing sales are holding up, um, general retail is holding up, and we've seen JB Hi-Fi and Super Cheap all put out good results. And Premier on Friday, um, after guiding to strong first seven weeks of the year, gave an update saying the first 12 weeks are up 40% on, right. on PCP. They're doing very well. Um, the full year results surprised on the upside. Analysts were forced to upgrade. Uh, share price moved 15% on the day. That was the extent of the surprise. Why? He's a very good retailer. Um, well, they are very good retailers. Manages the costs quite tightly. Uh, they got some high margin brands in Smiggle and Peter Alexander. Peter Alexander, the pajama brand, keeps going from strength to strength. Yep. They could take that offshore at some stage if they want to. Uh, Smiggle is recovering. Um, it's a back to school category. Uh, other side of the world's going back to school now. Those sales have gone up strongly. They paid a special dividend, also announced a share buyback. So for me, it's a company that keeps performing. Analysts keep waiting for earnings to decline. I think consensus has got FY23 declining. If what they've stated were the first 12 weeks of the year continues, you're looking at analyst upgrades into FY23, right. um, 1.5 billion in cash investments, property, etc. Okay, so are you bullish on the whole retail sector or just no. selected ones? Because no. a lot of people say, hey, headed into recession, consumers gonna find it tough, but they've all all the retailers have been smashed, haven't they, except for Lavisa, which is kind of gets happening. Good companies don't sit there and let things happen to them. So right. Premier has 70% of its uh, leases in holdover. So they can um, close down underperforming stores if they need to. About 22, 24% of their sales are online. So if they've got an unprofitable store or it's not working, they can shut that down. They can manage costs pretty well. So they're not going to just sit there and, um, and do nothing. So for me, right. when you get a quality retailer being sold off, from a long-term perspective, it's a chance to buy stocks uh, at a depressed value where the outlook isn't as bad okay, as Okay, so PEs are still low. For Premier? Uh, EV to EBIT's about seven times. PE's oh. about 12, 14 times. But you've right. got, you got to strip out Breville and Maya and, and the cash and right. the properties and that kind of stuff. So for me, uh, it's compelling okay. value at this level. I think of Talga Group. 
Yeah, look, I had to do a bit of research on yeah, this one. Sorry. Uh, it hadn't come up before, I don't think. Yeah, look, it's, it's in the battery technology space. It is a cash burner, so normally I would say avoid. But they recently did a capital raise, and they raised about $22 million, um, and they've signed a non-binding offtake agreement with a large um, European car manufacturer. So it's probably safe for the next 12 months, and it's trading above the recent capital raise price. So... So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So I would hold on. I wouldn't buy any more. But given that they've got an agreement in place, they've recently raised money, they're secure cash flow for at least the next 12 months. For me, it's a hold hold on to see how it goes. And that's that's not a terrible chart. I wouldn't put any more money in. But if you invested uh, a couple of months ago, I would hang on to see um, how the next 12 months plays out. Okay. Mathan, graphite and batteries. So Mathan's ignoring the fundamentals, as, as, as usual. Uh, so I think, I think the stock is a buy. Uh, it's in a space where there's a lot of spending happening at the moment. Mm. They're repairing aging infrastructure, water, uh, defence, all that kind of stuff. So that spending doesn't go away because there's an interest rate rise or there's a war on the other side of the world. Their working hand or their order book, um, last reported, was $458 million, more than double on the prior corresponding period. Their tenders and pipeline is $2.4 billion. Wow. So as Nathan pointed out, 100 mil market cap company tendering on over $2 billion worth of work. Um, there are cost pressures, there's labor shortages. So contractors like Juritech mm-hmm. are saying to their clients, this is the price. Yeah. And this is the price for this week. On Monday, there's a new price. So ultimately, the, the governments, the large infrastructure builders, need the work done and they're paying the price because otherwise the work doesn't get done. So if a bridge breaks, you need to fix the bridge. So the, they, they are like a John's Ling, which is in, in retail, remediation and repair, but yep. they're in the big government infrastructure areas and like bridges and roads and other in, and big industrial. Yep. Yep. And there's a lot of spending in that space at the moment. Yep. And there are a number of places that do it, but they're, for one of a phrase, their books are full. So they're not discounting it like they used to right. in the past to win some work. Their mm. margins are holding up because there's not enough labour. So we, we actually like the space and this company is, as per the share price, has been doing well. And yeah. as, as long as they win their fair share of those tenders, that share price should track upwards with their earnings. So okay. we like it, I think it's a buy. Um, not too small, illiquid? They're certainly bigger. Um, it, it's not for everyone, liquidity is a risk. But liquidity is probably factored into the share price as well. So right. not, not for the mega funds, you, you can't get set in a stock this small, but for the, the average uh, personal investor, you should be able to pick up a few um, to make, have a meaningful position. Right, okay, all right. Uh, and next stock is, uh, Philip, is Retail Food Group, of course, uh, operates a number of franchises and um, uh, big brand names, Donut King, Michelle's Patisserie, Brumbies, Bakeries, uh, Gloria Jeans, Coffee, uh, Crust Gourmet Pizza, all under the one umbrella. Um, what do you think of Retail Food Group, particularly after Domino's uh, warning came out? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Domino's is uh, more of a global company. This is Australian focused. If you look at their share price, their share price has really been hit in the last two years. Um, It was impacted by COVID. So we we think it's a buy. We like the story. Main reason is it's a COVID rebound story. So a lot of their stores are in shopping centres and people just didn't go to shopping centres during lockdown. We've heard from other retailers that people just went to the supermarket, bought what they needed to. Maybe the pharmacy went back home. So foot traffic was down. That's now starting to normalise. People are also coming back to the CBD. So um, they're getting foot traffic back through the stores, the various stores, and we expect um, their earnings to grow. We also think what they sell is relatively defensive in a downturn. If you're going back to the shopping centres over Christmas, you're probably going to buy your kid or yourself a donut. You're going to buy a cup of coffee. You might buy a pastry at Michelle's Patisserie. So yeah. quite defensible earnings as people trade down. You heard from the retailers yeah, but last a week. Chart, uh, it's a weird looking chart, isn't it? It is. It's not the most liquid stock, so no. you need to be aware. But you can see, you know, pre-COVID, it was up sort of seven cents. It dropped to four and a half. It's now uh, back up at six. We think it's wor- worth a little more. Um, as they start, there is an ACCC issue that they're, that they're working through right. with some of their franchisees. That seems to be coming to an end. So as they work through that, and as we start to see actual data points, maybe the first half result where people coming back into their stores, their earnings should go and their earnings should be relatively defensive in an economic downturn because they sell donuts, coffee, pizza. Right, not, okay. Not expensive. And with an ESG filter, yeah. what does this look like? It's an interesting one because you're playing the market uh, and I think it's hedged. So days like today, you sort of think, why would you look at it? For the genuine long-term investor, I think it's a buy. It's right. a good way to access the market. 
lower fees. So you're not paying fund management fee, it's basically a passive fund. Uh, I think it's at two year lows or, or something, um, uh, something, something of those sorts of levels. Yep. Generally speaking, um, over the longer term, share markets go up. Obviously last year or two, they have not. Uh, if you're taking a genuine three to five year view, this is a great way to enter the, um, the, the world equity market. Um, don't look at the share price daily, days like today, it's gonna be volatile. Um, but I actually think it's a long term buy, particularly days like today or years like we've had right. where it just gets thrown out. Um, longer term, this should trade higher um, with general equity market. So, so for retail investors who go, look, I want a bit of an ESG sort of flavour, is, is this the way to do it rather than individual stocks? It depends on your skill set, depends on your time uh, and whatever else you own. So yeah, yeah, work for a financial advisory firm. Speak to your advisor, find out is this yeah. the best for you? Because you're talking about one investment in one yeah. equity market. So yeah. how much should you put in the equity market, let alone particularly ESG things? So um, sometimes you might want an aspect of ESG. You might want a, a handful of funds. If I wouldn't make this my only stock. It needs to be oh, part no. of a broader portfolio. So no, part it is of one way to access it. It's probably not the best way to access it. But if you're time poor, you don't want to do the analysis, buy an index okay. fund. Buy All right. Fund. Nathan? Manufacturer? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, mixed results recently. They had some uh, production issues given COVID, lockdown and stuff. But yep. demand for their products clearly uh, are going up with extra um, uh, personal protective equipment in demand given the, the new world and with surgeries returning uh, to normal you'd think um, demand for gloves and stuff will increase but input costs are also increasing as well and they're yeah. probably increasing a faster rate than actually demand is so there's a little bit of pressure on margins and I think they've got a, a relatively cautious outlook statement as well the euro US is also moving against them yeah. it seems to be trading in line with analysts um, average valuation so it's not particularly cheap but it's not expensive so if you owned it, it's probably in a good space. It looks to me to be fair value. So they've, they've been pretty open with their outlook. So there's no reason to rush out and sell it. Uh, but I wouldn't buy it at these levels. So for me, right. it's a hold. If you found yeah. something cheaper to buy, recycle into that. But for me, on valuation, it, it's a hold. ASX? I think I'm on the show with the wrong Nathan. Uh, right. That's, 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 that's not the Nathan I, I work with. Uh, my, my apologies. Uh, I would have sworn you'd have picked that as a sell based on, on the momentum. Uh, I think it's a buy. Uh, oh, a buy as well. For, I mean, okay. there's so much doom and gloom uh, in terms of the market at the moment. And the stats recently put out by the ASEC showed that you know, everything looks terrible versus the prior corresponding period, volumes, trades, corporate right. activity. That's going to return to normal growth at some stage. It might be 12 months away, but geez, we're at near three year lows. Yeah. In an equity market, we know that works. We know there's demand for. Um, People aren't going to put a lot into property at the moment. You would mm -hmm. think interest rates are going up, so demand for bonds will go up. But as a genuine long-term investment, the ASX hasn't been this cheap for um, for about three years. So I yeah. think for a genuine long-term, it's compelling value at this price. Yeah, I'd be a buy. Okay. Uh, and I was convinced, Nathan, it would be a sell. So yeah. That's but, and if it gets back to the 90 bucks, even if you sell out of that, that's a 50% return for you. Yeah, so absolutely. At these levels. Are. Okay. Um, our next stock. Um, I didn't know much about. Uh, Damien wants a view, Philip, on Touch Ventures. It's um, basically a venture capital business that invests in tech companies that are associated with Afterpay or, or leverage off um, Afterpay's technology. And initially, um, the share price spiked when it floated for yeah. all, the, all the excitement about Afterpay and buy now, pay later. And it's come off a long way since then. Interestingly, in their recent trading update, they're quite cautious, the market. So this is a private venture, a venture capital firm, private equity firm saying, we haven't got much to buy. They're holding right. a lot of cash and they're doing a share buyback. Right. That's not why you invest in venture capital. You want no. them to go and buy some assets. And from what we've just discussed in the listed market, assets haven't been this cheap for two years. So, so it's just been going a year. Basically, uh, yeah, so and from 47 down to where it is now. Yep. So you don't want them to be doing a buyback. You want them to be investing yeah. in assets. So having said that, share price has fallen a long way. So yeah. for me, it's a hold. You would hold on at these levels. You don't want them to do a buyback. It'll support the price for a while. You want them to find some assets to buy and trend up back towards yeah. the 30 cent level. So it's too cheap to sell, uh, but you hope in the next six months, they talk more positively about the outlook and find some assets mm. to buy, which is okay. why, why people invested. Yeah, mate. Beaver. 
Ah, uh, Nathan, do you even lift, bro? Do you even lift? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Someone who lifts would never have that view. For me, this is a buy. Um, a buy? It's a buy. Right. A and it is about the data analytics. You may laugh, but people probably laughed at Kogan when Kogan started and said, hey, we're going to do data analytics and understand right. the customer. But people said, no, you will never compete with Amazon. And then Kogan did what they did. Right. So this is a data analytics business. I mean, there is a, apparently a gym on every corner for a reason. This is non-discretionary spend. A diff point of differentiation for these guys is they're not in the CBDs. Rents are very high in the CBD. So their the nearest CBD location is Piemont. These, these guys are out in the burbs. Um, the rent's cheaper. So the right. gym equipment costs the same. Staff costs about the same. But the rents are far less, which allows them to offer a more attractive price point. Their average customer pays $15 per week. Um, there, by being in the suburbs with remotely working, with working from home, that's where the customer is. So they mm. spend a lot of time and money understanding the customer. So they actually ran us through uh, their IT systems, their data collection systems uh, about a week ago, where they measure everything they can, demographics, when people are going, what they're using. So there was an example where they gave that there was a gym that in their network that was 70% females. Shouldn't be 70% females, it's a, it's a both sex gym. Normally that attracts the males. Why aren't the males coming? They realize that, well, we don't have enough 20 kilogram weights, so men want, generally want the heavier weights. So they put the heavier weights in, back come the men, everybody's happy. Right. They had another gym where they realized that, um, geez, our cardio equipment isn't being used. Um, why don't we switch out some of the treadmills and put some more weights? That brought back the members. So right. most gyms, We'll have twice a year promotions. Uh, January, the you know yep. news resolutions. Then spring, you know, twelve weeks till summer. Get ready. They're constantly interacting with their members, and they're picking up. Gee, Nathan used to go every week. Now he's stopped. What's going on? Oh, he actually moved house. Why don't we tell him that there's a gym closer to his home? Hmm. Why don't you switch the membership? Okay. So everybody's time poor by keeping things simple, by making it easier for their customers to go. That's why they have 70% occupancy and they're the second largest chain in Australia. I actually think what they're doing is misunderstood, but they've got very hmm. good growth prospects okay. because it is non-discretionary spend. So it, it's well, a buy from, from me. Cer certainly a good case putting there. Nathan, uh, are you willing to change your view? After listening to that? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Will we get you in the gym? <laughs> well, I think I, I, after I recover from the damage I've done playing cricket after 15 years, I think right. I, I might be able to go to the hospital more likely. Okay. Than All gym. right. Okay. Our final stock, and I'll start with Philip on this one. Um, Philip Elders, the big agricult diversified agricultural. Yeah, it creates a lot of debate. This one, I think it's a buy. They've got a result out on November 14. I think uh, conditions are quite strong in the Australian agricultural sector at the moment. We've had a bit of rain, we know that. That's been part of the East Coast. The West Coast is largely yep. okay. Farmers are making near record profits. They will continue to invest that back into their economy. Elder supplies um, uh, a lot of their inputs. They should benefit this year and next year. It's another stock, a bit like um, Premier, where analysts like to call the peak and you know they'll deliver a 40% growth in, in EBIT this year. The market seems to think that that'll all of a sudden fall backwards next year. It's simply not going to happen. You know, you look at wheat prices, which are holding up pretty well because of what's happening yep. on the other side of the world. Farmers are producing near record volumes. Cattle prices are holding up. I think the 12 month to three year outlook for, for this company is quite strong. And for those who want to argue an agricultural cycle, under the current management, their EBIT has grown by 30% per annum over the last seven years, seven to eight mm -hmm. years. The worst year it went backwards by one percent okay. and during the last drought it went up by sixty percent so it can manage positions. through the cycles as we said earlier good good management doesn't sit there and and yeah. things happen to mm. them they make decisions good point. And, and, and 